Thank you so much for watching this video. Today we're going to talk about preserving the health of your shoulders, okay? So um, we are going to start with about the things that you would just have at home, right? Uh, which totally makes sense. You're there a lot more. Um, and talk about, so specifically what we're talking about is the front part of your shoulder, the anterior part, okay? Uh, this would also speak to you is if your neck gets tired too, okay? We also have the rear part of the shoulder, but today um, we're gonna talk about the front and as it pertains to making our back or our neck tired, okay? So um, we're gonna start propolis. So a few notes, and if you're watching this video over and over, feel free to skip over some of this dialogue. In order to have a healthy body, you can't just strengthen it. Okay? There's a series of events, just like if you're driving to the store, you have to get your keys, you have to get in the car, you have to have gas, and you have to have your wallet to go. Same idea. So in order for your shoulder to go where it needs to go, um, the first thing you have to do is you have to uh, be able to mobilize it. So what that means is you have to be able to open it up, okay? So that's what we're going to start with. And we're going to do it without props. Um, so first thing is mobility. So things that I would do is I would bring my hands to the side and I would open and bring your chest up. So I'll turn sideways. I'm gonna open and bring my chest up. Things that I want you to feel inside of you versus just seeing what you're doing is pull your shoulder blades down your back and lift your chin up. Okay, that's really good. And a Pilates, we usually do eight counts, but just do a couple. Maybe you could write these down too if you wanna be able to have a quick reference. So you're just rotating your hands up. Another thing we work on doing is if you can clasp your hands behind your back, so I'll turn sideways and pull your shoulders down and open like this. Pull down. Good. Boom, and open. So this is what you do when you just have your body, okay? The cool thing about your body is you kind of get to understand where you are and like what you have to work with. Over time, totally up to you, we start going forward and lifting, okay? But typically, if this is really tight, we don't do that. So just know, if you want to, you can lean forward and bring your hands to the center and hold. But I'm going to continue on, because uh, just who I'm making this video for, I'm going to meet you where you are. Another thing now, as we start adding things that we have at home, I recommend a door frame or a wall, a few options, is to turn your palm. So if you turn your hands down, it makes your shoulders tighter. So if you go thumbs down, it's no good, okay? You're gonna go more thumbs up like hitchhiker. You can put your hand on the wall and then you're gonna look away. So because your shoulder loves you, it's gonna try to lift up to protect you. So I want you to bring the shoulder blades down. That's why we started with that. And then I'm gonna slowly look away. Um, I can also start here, but I'm gonna walk my feet away to open this up. Now you'll know because you'll feel a stretch, okay? And your body's gonna try to protect you by lifting, so you bring your shoulder blades down and give a little bit of an extension. Yeah. Okay, this is a good one. If that's too much, you can also put your arms on the wall and then you can walk away like this. You can also do it in a door frame, okay? So if you don't really have an open wall because we have pictures at home, right? Good, and you're just looking to open this. Again, typically we're gonna try and lift our arm up because it just feels normal, but I want you to keep your shoulder blades down, okay? That'll help guide you, and your elbow's a little bit below your clavicle, your, your collarbone. And those are good guidances. Feel free to play with that, and I just want you to feel a big stretch. And then, of course, you'll do the other side. So I'm gonna start this way. I'm gonna turn. My right side is tight, so you can go further than my left. And then I'll hold it for a little bit, and then I'll bring it. Another good one that you can do at home, but be nice to yourself, okay? You can use the wall or you can use a chair. So I'll start with the chair as it's a little more, um, a little less dramatic as I'll put my hands here. And then I'm not gonna lean into a plank. I'm gonna sit my weight back and I'm gonna bring, not my head down, but I'm gonna go ahead and bend my knees and drop below versus my head, okay? And then if it feels good, you can bend and straighten a little bit, but I'm looking to get a stretch through under here. A lot of times with shoulder stuff, the triceps, and um, this is short, which makes us rotate, which makes it angry. So again, being able to open this up. So sometimes we stretch overhead, but that doesn't always feel good for shoulders, so that's why we're gonna use a chair, okay? Or a counter, or get creative, or couch, the back of your couch if you have that exposed. For a little rotation, you can also bring one hand down and that'll open it up a little bit more and feel free to bend as needed. And then I'll do that and then I'll switch. If you're doing this on a 
cell phone to, and you want to spend time on this, I'd recommend pausing the video during this. So like when I'm talking, pause, stretch, and then when you're ready to move on, unpause and keep going. Now, if you're going to use a wall, this is more of an advanced thing. You're going to put your hands, you're going to go shoulder distance or beyond, okay? You won't go close. You'll go a little bit further, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and stick my bottom back and bring you up. You can play with where your feet are, but I don't want you doing a plank, okay? You're going to have the weight in your backside. And then as you start getting more comfortable, you can lock your hands up and start bringing your sternum towards the wall. Remember, this is advanced. Again, feel free to pause the video. Again, I step in, hands up. As an option, okay? So the first step we do is we're mobilizing. We're making, we're opening it up. If you're at home and you have props, this is a great time for this, okay? So, if you're at home with props, tennis balls are super easy. Um, I recommend laying on the ground and placing it between your shoulder blade and your spine, and you're gonna lay on the ground. I'm gonna use the wall since I'm standing. You also can use the wall, but the gravity will make the ball fall, so it's easier on the ground. So, I'm gonna place it there. When you're on the floor or on the wall, you're gonna put your hand by your ear, and you're gonna draw circles with your elbow, and you'll go the other way. That is a very powerful and mobilizing the muscles that get tight from back there. Now, just a heads up, this is actually tight, which makes that tight. But we're unraveling the issue. And roll, roll. Now, after I do that a few times, so very much pause, I can go up my back to a different spot while you're laying on the floor standing, and I can also bring the ball down my back. And I recommend figuring out where is your big tension point and working on releasing that. Then, when I'm ready, I will take the ball out and I'll move it to the other side and see. And your side that hurts the least is your more functioning side, okay? You're not supposed to be in pain. Pain is just an indicator that something needs attention, right? Okay. So then after you do that, you can go ahead and set that down. The other thing I would do is if you have a foam roller, I would like you to lay on the foam roller. If you don't have one, that's okay. You're gonna make a football above your chest, okay? Your sternum, not your clavicles, not your collarbones, not here. This is where a lot of people with shoulder injuries go. I want it to be a little more by your waist, okay? Sternum's more here, um, like that, your breastbone. So then what I want you to do is be able to open and then squeeze back and then switch. I prefer you do this on the foam roller, but it's okay if you do this standing too. Open. And now I'll turn this way. I'd like my hand, my palm to go up to rotate. Open. So we do this to about eight. And I think I'm almost there actually. And then that holds your pelvis steady. And then you're gonna do both arms. Open. Good. This is part of mobilizing. We're getting into the um, strength part, but we'll, we'll get there in due time. This is just to get it open. When you're laying on the foam roller, this really helps. And then I'm going to make like a goal post and I'm going to bring it up and rotate. When you're laying down on the ground, it's nicer. Foam roller is encouraged. When you're standing, this goes into your shoulders and it makes the situation harder. Okay, so for the goal post, you're going to want to lay down. So I'll do that on the floor. I don't have my foam roller here because I imagine some people don't have them. So if I were here, I'd open and close. Try not to let your hands come towards your ears. Try to keep it good. And try not to clench. Yeah, I clench too. I try really hard not to clench. Good. Perfect, okay. Um, and then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and make my way back up. And we're gonna go into the face, uh, oh, you know what, just a little bit more. Cool, so if you have a broomstick, perfect. Broomstick, um, if you have a towel, that's good. Um, so I brought this because this is the closest thing to a towel that I have here. I have dowel rods, but I don't wanna get in your head. So you just need something with tension, okay? I'll move the chair a little bit out of the way for this purpose. Oh, tennis ball's gone, it's fine. So I'm gonna lay myself back down. 
I prefer if you have a chair that you're at an incline, but don't stand. You're gonna wanna lay down or be at an incline, okay? If you've been here, we have a yoga chair in the back, and so we do as well. So I'm gonna do the best I can to bring it over my head. If you have a shoulder thing, you might have to keep your arms bent and be gentle with yourself. See how I can run to my head? It's fine, it doesn't hurt, it's kind of weird, but that's fine. So I eventually want to be able to adjust my hands on the broomstick or on the towel, and I want to lengthen, and I'm going to go ahead and use my lats. Your lats are your armpit muscles here, versus using this crunchy part here. If this doesn't feel good, skip it. I mean, if it doesn't like pinch, I don't say any of this feels great. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, the wider your hands are, the more room you're going to have. Eventually, we're going to work to where we're shoulder distance, okay? But pick that out, and you're going to reach up and overhead, and you're going to pull the broomstick apart, and you're going to bring it back up. So see, I'm not actually going to break it, but I want to take the forces to pull it apart. Pull, 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 pull. Reach, and I'm going to do three more. If you're at home, I would go to eight. Pause the video until you do eight or make notes so you can do this on your own. Also, I can't help it as a Pilates teacher, you gotta keep your belly button in, okay? No stumping out, because you'll make a potato and you don't want potatoes in your belly. Okay, so then I'm gonna hold it overhead and I'm gonna pull to stretch out this side and then I'm gonna pull and it stretches this out. But I'm not lifting, I'm pulling from here so that I don't have to activate those angry muscles. I'm gonna pull. Sorry, the chair is in the way. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull. Again, if something doesn't feel good, please disregard it and stop. And that just means not today. Okay, it doesn't mean never, it just means not today. Good. And then I'll go ahead and bring it back up. And then another thing we do is we pull the broomstick apart and bring the elbows down, and then we lift it back up. Pull it apart, lift it back up. Try not to arch your back and lift your chest. Try to keep your chin towards your chest. Keep your belly button tucked in nice and tight, okay? If I were to come poke, that you wouldn't let me poke you. Good. I want to again, just if you were curious, we do this to about eight. Now, if you happen to have a stretchy band at home, what you do from here is then you pull one side and you pull one side. You can do this with a broomstick. You can also do this um, with a towel, but it feels more gratifying when you have a stretchy band and you can stabilize, okay? So just know that's what that will look like. By the way, your body's just communicating. It's okay not to have everything. You don't have to go buy it, but I just want to tell you what I'm feeling for. So we're, when we're pulling it apart, we're strengthening the back part here versus letting this tighten. And this is part of the mobilization. And I'll go the other way. Oops, sorry, I'm a little bit close. One, two. Notice I'm not rounding my shoulders, you, you either. I'm keeping my shoulder blades together and I can feel that because I'm laying ground, on the ground and gravity's helping. Belly butts are tight. Perfect, good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up one more time. If you push the tops of your hands into the floor, that should also pull this open. Typically what happens is lie your thumb down and that makes this tight. So we're going thumb up and we're pushing open to open this up. Especially if you're a lady, um, there's, some, there's some biology in that. So I'm gonna roll to my side and set myself up. So other things now, the level two is going into stability. So we worked on mobilizing. Now we have to be able to stabilize, okay? Um, one of the ways to do this by the way, stability feels hard, okay? So just know when you go to do this, mobility feels like exploration. It doesn't feel hard, it just feels like you're feeling. So um, stability and then strength can get into that hard part, okay? But they're really important on keys to getting better. So things to stabilize. I would start on a chair before you take it to the ground for wrist things. I'm gonna sit in the chair. I'm gonna put my hands there. I'm gonna pull my shoulders back and I wanna be able to lift up. Think like a reverse plank, right? I'm not gonna hold a plank because that's gonna keep that tight. I'm gonna go a reverse plank and I'm gonna lift my hips up and be able to hold. Now it's really common, I see people with tight shoulders that'll do this. So can you think of lifting your chest, reaching up towards the ceiling? It might 
make this part of your neck a little tired. It did for me when I started. That's because I didn't have st good neck stability. I had good neck strength, but not stability. And stability is holding. Okay, and that's what we're doing. Holding, and then when you get tired or fatigued, you just rest. Good, oh, light for your neck. For this, we do about, you can do eight seconds to 30 seconds, okay? You can guess or you can wait till you get tired, but I want you to keep your form. What I do, if you're in classes, I set a timer or I'll count to eight like I do in a Pilates class. Timer is more long standing. Eight counts are good basis just to get yourself right. So when I count to eight, I pull my shoulders back, I lift my chest, and I go for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Okay, now because I don't hold a lot in life, because life is busy, I'm gonna add busy movement, okay? So I'm gonna do it again. Please feel free to skip through this or to go ahead and turn pause the video and do it on your own if you like. But I'm gonna lift my chest and I'm gonna lift one leg up, set it down, lift. And there's a transfer of weight into your shoulders where I'm trying not to let my shoulders wiggle and I'll lift. If that feels like too much, you can also lift up to your high heels. So you can transfer the weight, and this should be plenty. And this is where it starts getting kind of hard. Or you can march. Remember I said you can pause or stop the video, so I want you to play around with which one. Good, and then I'm gonna set myself back down. Good. There's a little pressure on the wrist. When your shoulders are rounded forward, your wrists are more sensitive. As we start opening up, your wrists will be less obvious, okay? Um, promise, I trust, trust the process. So then, as you get better, you can take it to the floor. The reason the chair is nice is it offsets gravity. Then we go like this, gravity is more profound, okay? So stop here, skip, keep going. Um, or you can do it, join me on the floor if you're just doing this. So I'll make my way to the floor. And then I'm gonna turn my, I personally like my, my fingers out. Fingers towards your butt can put more wrist wrinkles, more wrist pressure, so I like fingers out. Um, but it's more of a comfort issue. So I'm gonna roll my shoulders back and I'm gonna open up my hips. Yeah, good. And then I'll do the same thing, eight seconds to 30 seconds, and then I will add marching, okay? Now from here with stability, we've had a lot of success with the wall bridging. So I'm gonna go to the wall, or you can use a chair or a couch if you have that at home, okay? I just kinda like the wall, it's right here and convenient. I'm gonna scoot my bottom close. Notice I'm not like this and laying down, that's no good. You're gonna to wanna to scoot close because it'll be better for you. And then you're gonna turn and put your feet at the wall. Roughly, I want like a 90-ish degree angle. The closer I am, the easier it is and the more height I get. That's why I had you scoot your butt closer. The further away you are, the more hamstrings it is. I know, it's crazy. So you're gonna be better if you scoot your butt close to the wall and turn and put your feet up, okay? I'm gonna rest my hands here, and I don't wanna shorten. If you catch yourself doing that, take your hands to a day at the beach, let your elbows go down and open and relax, and you're gonna lift your hips up and back down. I have slippery clothes on, um, so if I slide, that's why. Try not to push, try to just lift. And if you have slippery clothes on, too, welcome. So I'm gonna lift. Uh, see how my hips are up? They're not like creased. I'm gonna try it open, and I'm gonna set myself back down. And I'm gonna do eight of these. And that should help offset any shoulder stuff. I am slippery, I'm so sorry, guys. That's why we use yoga, yoga, yoga blocks now. Okay, you get the point, right? So, you can also do that on the edge of your bed, feet on the bed, but the elevation is really nice. You can do it with your feet on the floor, but that turns more into a back thing long term and we're worried about our shoulders for today so don't worry about that okay so then we go to the strength portion sorry guys okay so that's um we did mobility first opening we did stability being able to hold places and now we're going to go into the strength portion so i'm going to start on the wall because if you have a shoulder thing and you're watching this video this is probably a good place to go so i'm going to myself back up right um, the wall is the best because we can play with gravity because it's not as hard to stand. It's not easy to stand. It's not as hard to stand. So what you'll do is you're going to take your hands here and you're going to send your elbows out, pinch your shoulder blades together, and you're going to do a wall push up. Try not to round. And this is just, this is hard because it's a lot of self-regulation. Self-regulation is hard. 
Physical stuff is hard, but cognitive stuff is really hard, okay? So be nice to yourself and look for those touch points of like your shoulder blades and your sternum and then your chin up. Things that you can kind of see more versus trying to feel inside of you until you get there, okay? So I'm gonna do eight or 30 seconds. Good, bringing my shoulder blades and lifting my chin up. Okay, then as you get better, mm -hmm. feel free to pause the video and do your finishers out or take notes. Then this chair slides. Do it on the couch or a chair that doesn't slide or a countertop and you're gonna change your angle and you can do push-ups here, okay? What I would tell you is don't push your butt out when you do push-ups because that's gonna aggravate that same thing. So you're gonna bring yourself forward and see how it kind of goes towards my waist. That's better versus towards, you see the difference? That's because you're afraid to stick your butt out. It's because you're afraid. So stick with the wall or allow yourself to shift your weight forward a little bit and push. Notice I'm not going all the way down. They lied to you when you said you had to do that. You do not have to go all the way down. I want you to do what you can do and then in due time, you'll be able to. I'm not gonna do it very consistent though and that'll be very embarrassing for this video. And then I'll have to like delete it and that's no fun. Okay. And then the final part that I would like you to work on is, I'm gonna go ahead and go down if you want to. If not, shut off the video, do some more stretches and call it good. Um, things that I would do if you're at home is we call them reverse push-ups, so we're deconstructing a push-up. I would take your knees back. Remember the chin, shoulder blade thing? Lift your sternum, lift your chin, and you're gonna lower yourself down to the ground. Good. Now when you get up, get up however you want. You do not have to do a push-up. I actually wouldn't do a push-up. I would get up however you want, turn your fingers off, lift your chin and sternum up, hold your belly button so you're not tanking, okay? And I want you to set your breastbone down first, your sternum down first. And this is hard, this is the strength part. This is taking the mobility, this is taking the stability, and they're, they're best friends now and they have to work together, okay? So I want you to do it from your knees. The floor is hard, so I'm gonna do it from my toes. Do it from your knees first and then we're gonna do it from our toes, okay? This is a good time to pause the video or take notes, but this is what I want it to look like. Chest up, sternum up. I'm not setting my hips down first, okay? I'm gonna set my sternum down. Chest up, head up. When you start doing this, you're probably gonna flop because this isn't used to doing this, okay? So it looks like this. You're at home. You can totally do that at home. But I want you to work on it. Um, because once you can start setting yourself down, what happens is this part that's bound up and tight starts stabilizing and holding weight. The back starts strengthening and then it starts creating uh, equal pressure on the front and back so that it holds your shoulder in place. Uh, it's a good healthy biomechanics that you're learning um, versus pulling one side and pulling the other. It's not a tug of war. Now they're working together as a unit, okay? And this sucks, but it's, this is how it works, okay? I wouldn't ask you to do something if we could cheat and do it a different way because I also don't like doing planks and push-ups. But that's why we're not doing push-ups. We're doing reverse push-ups. So again, um, eight, eight counts are plenty at a time, okay? If you feel motivated, you can do more. Um, we'll do drills in class to build the sustenance. Uh, but again, I want to go ahead. I'm not leaning with your chin. Chin's up. Maybe put something really pretty in front of you, and you're going to lower yourself down. Sternum first. Start on your knees, and then take it to your toes. And get up however you can. And then if you want to finish with stretching, that'd be really rad. Uh, any of the things you did before, or anything that might feel good to kind of de-stress. Um, but thank you so much for watching, and I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, write me, and I'm such an open resource. I really want everybody to feel really good in their bodies and not feel like they're stuck in their bodies. So uh, have a great day, and even happier holidays. Bye. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Um, I was editing the video, and I was immensely like, oh my gosh, that sweater is gorgeous and I think it's so cozy and it's a little bit shiny. I don't know if you can tell on camera. However, it makes me look like a potato. So just to be very clear, when you guys are doing all of your work, 
when you're going, for example, on the wall and you're doing your wall push-ups, um, being cognitive to the ear where your pelvis is, on your tiptoes, elbows wide, belly button tight. Now you can see um, because everything was just flowing and that's important and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a girl. Okay, and then when I do my chest thing, I'm gonna go to the chair. Instead of pushing forward to see the difference, that, I'm gonna open my chest, lift my belly button, and I'll lift my heel and lift. Also, this is, you know, in 10 years when I look back at what I was like in my, when I was 33, I'm like, okay, that's what I was working with. <sighs> Shameless plug, girls, being a woman. <laughs> so, as you do so, just being cognizant that you can keep yourself uh, like you take care of good self, good care of yourself, and like you love yourself. Um, and I think I love that sweatshirt. I'm not going to re-record the video, um, but again, I just wanted to bring that up. So, thanks for being here, and feel free to ask me any more questions. Okay, bye.